Hey everybody, it's Joe Tommaso and welcome to this edition of 15 Minutes With. In this edition, we'll be speaking with Laura Perviance, who is currently incarcerated at the California Institution for Women in Chowchilla, California. Laura is currently serving a total of 50 years to life, 25 to life for murder and an additional 25 years consecutively for a gun enhancement charge because a gun was used in this crime. If you like this show and would like to keep it going and would like to see it get better as well as more frequent, please consider donating even a few dollars to paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. That is paypal.me slash J-O-E. T-O-M-A-S-O. Also, if you have any comments or questions for us or the individuals we interview, or if there's someone you'd like to see us interview, please email us at insidetherazorwire at gmail.com. Again, that is insidetherazorwire at gmail.com. Or you can snail mail us at P.O. Box 162, West Haven, Connecticut, 06516. Here's Laura's story. Okay, so what is your name and where are you calling me from? All right, my name is Laura Proviance, and I'm calling from inside Central California Women's Facility in Chowchilla, California. Okay, and why are you in prison? I'm in prison for murdering my mom, Caroline Sue Proviance. I pled out to 50 to life, a 25 to life first degree murder charge plus a 25 year gun enhancement. I'm seven and a half years into my sentence. I'm here because I refused treatment for my mental illness. I did all I could to lie about it and manipulate mm-hmm. others to not see it. Mm-hmm. I'm a survivor of mother-daughter incest, and I struggled a lot to understand the codependency I had with her. I was a vengeful coward, and I was stuck on punishing my mom for all of my problems. Okay. All right. Um, so can you tell me what life for you is like on the inside? What, um, you know, like, tell me a little bit about your day-to-day stuff. Tell me about any uh, dangers that you might see, any, you know, bad things you might see in there, your medical care, food, etc. Well, life inside is very stressful, and it's really lonely. Uh, the only peace and privacy that you have is what you can make for yourself, mentally and emotionally. Um, everyone in here has some version of being wounded or hurt. Um, which they may or may not care about working towards healing. So mm-hmm. my guard is always up, and it's it's very frustrating. Um, and then a lot of times dealing with mental health treatment here, mm-hmm. it's really, um, it's, it's putting out fires, it's touch and go. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not the, the level of intensive, continued therapy that I know that I need. So a lot of that stuff, I have to do it for myself, or I have to depend on, my peers on other inmates uh, who do have a certain level of training qualifications mm. to uh, to help me in that processing, and not everyone is a safe person. That I was just gonna, I was just gonna ask you, you when you were saying it wasn't where they have it all the time. So basically, it's not like when you're on. People need to realize it's not like when you're on the outside and you can go to some type of therapy, like weekly or biweekly or stuff. You're getting it whenever they get around to you, right? Yes, um, I have a regular, however you want to call regular appointment, once every three months, and that basically comes down to how you doing, what you feeling, do you have any anxiety, what are you up to, okay, you're good, bye. Um, I could do it more frequently than that, if mm-hmm. you put in um, like a medical request form, but it's essentially the same kind of meeting, oh, so what do you want to talk about today, oh, okay, well... You know, your regular person is going to talk with you about that. And, you know, do you pretty much, are you in crisis right now? No. Okay, see you later. Right. I mean, so I, I got to tell you, I've talked to other people who are in the, uh, you know, one of the institutions. And what they basically told me is that most stuff in there is just, here, take a pill. You know, they give yeah. people, you know, with mental health. Um, here in Connecticut, and uh, one of the people are, are actually in Pennsylvania right now, they actually said that most of the inmates there with mental health problems, no matter what, the, no matter what, if you have depression, if you have, you know, any kind of mental health problem, they literally just, here's some, here's some um, Melorel, Thorazine, stuff like that, you're walking around like a zombie, and that's the, you know, the, the degree of mental health treatment they have in a lot of the facilities, that's absolutely, I find that appalling, I really do. Now, your medical care that's in there, 
how how is that people you know there's a a common misconception for people on the outside have that you know people who are in prison actually get better medical care than people out here on the outside um i really wish that that was true (laughs) but it's just just not um it all comes down to a numbers game Mm -hmm. it's going to cost them money to send you out to see any kind of specialist if it's going to cost them money to give you any kind of treatment that's more than here take a take an aspirin and um, drink some water then they're going to fight you tooth and nail every step of the way to try and not give you care i was going to ask you too some of the places like uh guys i've talked to in uh the federal bro prisons and uh people i've talked to in uh pennsylvania people i've talked to in florida they're actually paying for their medical care do you guys pay for it there uh, we no longer, they, they passed some laws uh, the past few years, and one of them was that you could no longer uh, charge us the $5 copay. Yep, uh, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, they, that's what yeah, uh, they, yeah, they can't charge us anymore, but I have had that conversation with some of my peers in here who thankfully, you know, we do have family and, and loved ones and people out there who would be able to, say, pay for you know, uh, medical care for us in here to be able to Mm -hmm. pay that extra charge just so that we could get a better level of care so we can have access to it at all. I got to be honest, the uh, Department of Corrections, the state, I mean, you're already in a state facility. You're basically, I guess you can call it a ward of the state. They should be taking care of you. You know, that's why I, I when I heard the the thing about the the copays, I was like, "You're kidding me!" And I actually have somebody tell me that if you don't have the copay, either they put a running tab, and then when you do get money, they take it from you, or they just don't take you to the doctors. And I was, I just found that crazy. Yeah, they did used to do that. Um, it's it stopped for about the past year, but it's, I mean, it's still fighting tooth and nail to get treatment if they'll pull you in they'll triage you and if you're like not actively dying on them at that Mm. moment Mm -hmm. they'll shuffle you along wow um i was going to ask you about the food but let me ask you um another question with the coat with covid out there what are they doing for covid on the inside with you guys well um we're essentially on a version of lockdown Mm -hmm. um This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. We're having uh, all of the self-help groups that we have to take the initiative to sign up for, to attend, to participate in. Those have all stopped. Mm -hmm. Um, Education, vocational classes, those have all stopped. Um, Thankfully, I'm in correspondence correspondence college classes. Mm -hmm. So um, I just got a memo saying that that was going to be starting up in three weeks, but it's essentially independent study, so it's all through the mail anyway. Right. Um, I just So it, everything has come to a standstill. Um, all of this stuff like out there, unless you're having like a, a dental emergency, a medical emergency, um, all of that's gone on hold. Um, I have, you know, I've been waiting to see the dentist since, you know, March of this year, and I haven't been able to. It's everything has come to a, a complete stop and we are spending a, we're spending a good you know 22 hours in ourselves that's what i was going to ask you are you guys at least yeah. getting to go outside to some type of recreation yeah we're able to get out to the yard every other day for anywhere from an hour to uh, an hour and a half Um, and then we have time uh, to spend in the day room to come out, use the phones like I'm using now, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, watch a movie, do whatever. Uh, We'll we'll have that every day for anywhere from, you know, an hour, two hours. Is your shower time in there too, or? Um, Well, thankfully, the way that we're housed here, we have our showers in ourselves. Okay. Okay. Um, It's essentially the space of, like, three parking spaces with Mm -hmm. four bunk beds in them. Okay. So there's just no way to physically distance yourself at all. Are you getting masks in there or anything? Or uh, We've been issued masks. Mm-hmm. And, um, they're, they're increasing the threat level about us having to wear them. Mm-hmm. However, the problem that we have is that when the staff don't wear them, right? Like it's, it's like every day now, okay, another staff came back, positive okay we have another inmate that's on quarantine because their test came back positive like it's yep. 
every day now, it's another, you know, it's spreading. And, you know, I haven't been anywhere in over seven and a half years, so I know right. I didn't go out there and catch it and come here and give it. Right, right, exactly. So it's, it's very frustrating for them to, you know, demand of us, especially when the auditor's poking around, like, hey, wear your masks or else you're, you're getting a write-up and da-da-da. Um, that could... people, you know, they don't wear masks. And they're coming back and forth, back and forth, all over the place. And like, what the hell, man? Are they yeah. are are they quarantining people who are getting sick, or are they keeping them in the in the same cell with you guys? Um, so people that are showing signs and symptoms, it's up to um, it's up to them or the people around them to mm. report that. Okay. Um, and if they are showing signs and symptoms, they will be put on a. Uh, they will be. They will be separated from us, mm-hmm. seeing a test. Okay. Um, they have, they've taken over a whole other housing unit on a whole other yard. Okay. Um, to be able to do that to give that distance, but I mean, it's essentially you're signing up for solitary confinement. Right. That's so what I figured. People, yeah, they don't. I mean, why? Why would you do that? Right. You know? It's just like uh, I know some people say when they're uh, you know they they have this thing where if you if you're suicidal you're supposed to tell a staff member and that's you get why would you tell them that because you get placed into a strip cell with nothing and I'm not just talking of strip cell there's no mattress no you know sheets and stuff I'm talking about you're oh. literally there in a turtle suit. Yeah, that's that's how I spent my first six months in the county jail and they called it suicide watch they were waiting for me to get stable on my meds so yeah nobody ever wants to sign up for that no one's ever going to go oh i'm not feeling too well let me go spend who knows how long completely isolated with absolutely nothing that's crazy yeah so i I gotta ask you this question i I know i sent you everything in advance um so do you feel remorse for your crime are you sorry for what happened oh my god so it's uh, I I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to find the words for mm-hmm. how much of a dirtbag I feel like for what I've done. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the worst feeling to have stolen life, and I've hurt a lot of other people really bad. And um, I can't fix or replace or return my mom's life. Right. I can't fix all the pain and the anger that I've caused. I spent so much time wrapped up being selfish with how I felt mm-hmm. that I never thought about how my actions were going to hurt or affect anyone about around me until it was too late. So all of that animosity that I held on to, I multiplied it out to everyone that I cared about for them to direct it back on me. So how is it going to look for me to be like, oh, don't do that, when I just, you know, left you feeling, like, screwed up? Like, this, it's, it's a terrible feeling. I disrupted a lot of lives, I stole a lot of peace, and I created a lot of anger. So I don't think sorry is a strong enough word to describe how I feel now. So with, with um, that... With that, I got to ask you if you saw somebody that was going down the same road, or you saw yourself, like say before everything happened, what would you say? This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. What would you say to that person, or what would you say to yourself if you were able to go back in time before everything happened? Um, if I could go back in time and, and tell myself anything, I would be yelling at myself to stop lying to everyone about feeling suicidal and homicidal, and I would drag myself to the hospital to go on a mental health hold. And if I saw anyone else heading down the path that I was on back then, I would do all that I could to steer them towards getting help, to stop them from acting on hurting others or themselves. How are some of the ways prisons changed you from the old you to now? Uh, prison has given me some time to understand myself better, mm-hmm. to learn how to deal with my feelings, um, to learn how to do that without drugs or alcohol. You have 60 seconds remaining. And uh, to be focused on, uh, to be focused enough to plan and work towards a healthy future that I'm excited about. Thank you for listening to 15 Minutes With. I hope you've enjoyed this edition. If you have enjoyed this edition of 15 Minutes With, please hit the like and the subscribe button. You can also help me keep this show going and watch it get better by donating to paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. That address again is paypal.me slash J-O-E-T-O-M-A-S-O. 15 Minutes With is constantly looking for new content to upload and new people to interview. 
If you would like to share your story or if there's someone you would like to see us interview, please email us at InsideTheRazorWire at gmail.com. That email address again is InsideTheRazorWire at gmail.com. Last but not least, again, if you like to support this channel, please subscribe and hit the like button. Until next time, we'll be seeing you.